and just say thank you. And so this morning, with whatever's going on up here, with whatever I'm feeling in here, I stop and make a conscious decision. Lord, I rejoice. So if you're feeling it, I ask that you stand with me. Let us go before his throne and just tell him thank you. Father God, we come before you this morning in recognition, Lord God, that you are so good, God. We thank you, Lord God, because you've been our keeper, you've been our healer, you've been our deliverer, you've been our way maker, you've been our provider, you've been whatever we needed you to be, Lord God. And so as we come into your house, God, we're not going to sit here, Father God, thinking about all the other stuff, but we are going to make a conscious decision, Father God, to get our heart postures right and to focus on the one who has been faithful all of our lives, God. And so in this moment, we declare that there is none greater there is none better, there is none other than the Lord our God. We thank you, Lord God, and we ask Jesus that it's not about our agenda today, Lord God. We come with our hands up and our arms open, Father God, and the only request we have is have your way, Lord God. You already know the needs we have. You already know the that we need Father God and we can trust that you're going to meet us exactly where we are and so Father God we're just open this morning Father God we want an encounter with you Father God we're not okay Father God just getting a little shot just getting a little fix Lord God but we want you to completely overwhelm and completely take over Father God because we surrender fully Lord God this morning we put us on the altar and we ask you to do whatever it is that you need to do so that you are honored you are magnified and you are glorified, Father God. For every person, Lord God, that has a part in this worship experience, Father God, I ask that you join, Lord God, that you come and you touch our hearts and touch our minds, Lord God, that we may stay focused on you, Father God. Speak loudly and speak clearly to us, Father God, so that we can be obedient in every area this morning. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you and we're here with our hearts open. Be God, Lord God, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. glory because we came for no other reason but to glorify him on today because he's worthy he's worthy of all the glory and all the honor and so today we just came for no other reason but to glorify our God glorify our God how many of you came to love on God this morning because he's worthy of all the glory and of all the honor. We just came to love on him. How many of you love God this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. This song just says we, we really love him. Amen. Hallelujah. We came to love on God this morning and we ask that you would stand to your feet and put your hands together with us as we love on God. Amen.
You're my everything. You're my everything. You 
just really want to tell you I love you. I just really want to tell you I love you. Oh, I just really want to tell you I love you. I just really want to tell you I love you. I just really want to tell you I love you. I just really want to tell you I love you. I just really want to tell you I love you. I just really want to tell you I love you. I just really want to tell you I love you. Is there anybody that wants to tell him that they love him this morning for being your everything? For being your all in all, for being your peace, for being your strength, for being your joy, for being your everything, for being those things that you couldn't speak, for being those things that when you couldn't even articulate it, he was that, amen. He's been our everything, amen. Hallelujah. We just thank him for being all that he is to us every day. And our response is that we just want to worship him. Is there anybody that just wants to worship him with everything that you are? Because he's do that for being everything to us. Hallelujah. I worship you with all of me, my heart, my Such a small sacrifice to worship you with all of me. I worship you. I worship you with all.
Sister in Christ, Minister Candace Barker, use one word that I will repeat, repeat, and let it resonate, and that is to rejoice. Whatever you had going on, rejoice. Whatever is going to happen, rejoice. The whole purpose is so that we can give honor to God for the great things he has done for us for the little things he has done for us, for the big things he has done for us, because he has sacrificed so much because he loves us so. He loved us first. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm so glad to see all of you here today. We are here to just celebrate the Lord and to welcome you in to this fold. If we have any first-time visitors, new visitors, those who have been here just today, if you would stand. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. E.L. Ross, and our first lady, Sheila Ross, we want to extend to you a hearty welcome. Come in and take your shoes off, feel welcome. I pray you will felt that way from the minute you walked in the door till you took your seat. And we pray that it continues all through the service. So thank you so much for being here. Well, this is a part that we can all this is a part we could all celebrate and we could all welcome them by standing up. We know what we have to do. We know we are glad to do it. And that's to say, welcome. Abundant Love Fellowship Church, let's welcome our guests. And 
and we have a special announcement that's coming from our First Lady, Sister Sheila Ross. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. It's such a pleasure to see you on today. Thank you, Dr. Henry, to my loving husband, our pastor, and to each and every one of you. It's just wonderful to see your smiling faces. But I came up here to make a special pearls announcement. Where's all my pearls? Well, um, as you came in, hopefully you stopped by and saw all the hats back there. And uh, so I just want you to know, get your best hat, your cute hat, your big hat, your little hat, your fascinator, your baseball cap, whatever. I want you to all come out next Saturday wearing your hats. You can dress it up, dress it down, but I have a special uh, day planned just for the pearls. So please come out on next Saturday morning at 10 a.m. and fellowship with us, hear a word from the Lord, and just come out and be blessed and be loved on by all the sisters. Also, Also, with the permission of uh, Dr. Henry, what, can I get Sister Ware to stand, Minister Douglas to stand? We are here representing from Catalea. And on last night, we had our benefit uh, to help support the cancer survivors, those that still going through the journey. We just want to say thank you all that came out and supported each one of us. We couldn't have made the night without us. We had a dynamic, dynamic speaker with Dr. Galen Foreman, and he just thanked us so many times for just including him and allowing him to come and share his testimony. And we had so much food, so we decided to bring some food here for you all this morning. Just a little small snack, so please stop by the table before you leave. And again, uh, all the ladies, also I have, if you can stay with me about five minutes after church, five minutes, I promise I'll let you out. But I just, I just have a quick demonstration for you. Again, be blessed, get ready for the word, because God is not through with this service yet. Thank you. Hey, Amen. I've got to echo off of that. Uh, uh, we've got other members of our church who are a part of Catalea. We couldn't do anything without abundant love. But most of all, we couldn't do anything without our Lord. If it wasn't for him, Lord, Lord, we wouldn't even be on this journey, this cancer survivor journey. So I thank him, and I thank each and every one of you who have supported us through, through and through and through and through and through. And I thank our pastor for allowing us to do it. So I'm going to step back, and uh, you can uh, view the announcements. And so if we can... Good morning, Abundant Love Fellowship Church. Today is Sunday, August the 20th, and these are your weekly announcements. The Kirk Carr Tribute Concert will be held on Saturday, August the 26th at 6 p.m. at Second Missionary Baptist Church. Tickets are available at eventbrite.com, One Price Fashions, or see Sister Bridget Boggess. New Members Orientation is held every second Sunday of each month. Please see Minister Adrian Halliburton or Sister Elena Mason with any questions. Discipleship classes are held every Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. in person and via Zoom link. Please contact Minister Paula Smith for details. Join us each Wednesday night for prayer at 6.30 p.m. in classroom number one. A Zoom link is available. For additional information, please contact Minister Evelyn Jordan. Wednesday night live sessions are held in person and via Facebook Live. So join us each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Youth Bible Study is available to all youth ages 3 through 17 every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please see Minister Candace Barker with any questions. Our Sunday service is held in person and via Facebook Live. We welcome you to join us each Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. for a powerful word from God. 
Stay informed by following Abundant Love Fellowship Church on all of our social media platforms to receive up-to-date information. You can sell your tithes and offerings via PayPal by going to www.alfwaco.com and selecting the Donate button. Or you can mail checks or money orders to P.O. Box 1547, Hewitt, Texas 76643, or via our Cash App to ALF Offering. And these have been your weekly announcements. Have a blessed week, Abundant Love. Right, we use the announcements. Please, ladies, don't forget. Next Saturday, we're looking for you. Now we are up to our tithes and offering. And I just want to read something to you. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil, or fruit from the trees belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. And what that says to me is that every, every, everything we have is his. So what we do right now is out of obedience. You've already talked with him. You've already prayed about it. And now it's time for giving. And so... Whatever God had put on your heart that you were going to do today, what part of that fruit that you were going to give, that we are here to do that at this time of the, the program or the hour. And so if you will pray with me, oh dear Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for the abundance of love that you've given us. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Father God, we know you know our heart. And you know, Father God, just what we are thinking before we think of it. What we do before we do it. Right now, Father, we just asking that you bless this offering, that you bless these tithes. For those who are able to give, God, thank you. For those who are praying with us and not able, thank you. We just ask you to bless each and every person here, God. Father God, take these, clean them up, and use them as you choose. You know where we need to, what we need to do. So God, we leave it in your capable hands. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, now the ushers are here. If everyone has an envelope and ready, we're ready.
question. Are there any real worshipers in the house? Are there any real worshipers in the house? Pastor, explain real worshiper. Are there any one, is, is there anyone in the house that you have more bills than you have money, but you can worship anyway? Is there anybody in the house that you got pain in your body, but you refuse to let your pain silence your praise? Are there any real worshipers in the house? Is there anybody in here uh, today that, 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 that you're going through something right now in your life and everything ain't what you want it to be, but yet you can still give God. I'm looking for true worshipers in here. Glory be to God. Because the true worshiper will say, I'm giving you my heart. I'm giving you my soul. I'm giving you my life. It ain't about He's what I got. It's about having you. Glory be to God. I give to you. we got problems we know that we got stuff God but Lord I thank you God that you're not intimidated by our stuff Father God and Lord I pray in the name of Jesus Father that God that you would look past our stuff minister to our hearts Father God minister to our, 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 our spirit Father God that we may be able to hear from you that we may be able Father God to embrace your word and Father God we feel it already God and Father God we lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us Father and Father God we open ourselves up to you even right now and Father God, we ask that the Holy Spirit would speak to us and speak through us in this space, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. God is an awesome God, amen. How many of you, we, we got a little work to do today, so how many of you are ready for the word of God? Glory be to God, hallelujah. Go with us to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. If you're able to stand, we're going to ask you to stand. Amen for the reading of the word of God. Philippians chapter 4. Chapter 4 verse 8. Finally, after all that's been said and done, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, 
Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, think on these things. Glory be to God. Now look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, get out of your head. Glory be to God. Think on these things. It's been a lot of talk about mental health lately. And specifically being mentally stable in the times in which we live. Can I tell you this morning that it's a real thing because it's crazy right now. The craziness of the times has affected the mind greatly. Depression, anxiety, worry, ADHD, PTSD, you name it, it's on the mind. According to the CDC, there are over 200 diagnosable mental disorders to date. And I look at it, that that's 200 ways, at least, that the enemy is trying to steal your mind. And it's the things, these things affect the mind or the things that we experience both past and present. Things that we see, things that we hear. The combination places things on our mind and we think about them. The things we think about are significant because our thoughts affect our brain. Ah, oh God. Thoughts affect the brain by causing neurochemical changes, by activating different patterns of brain waves Influencing your mood, your attitude, and your alertness. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not criminal. I'm just going through some stuff. What you think can interact with your perception. What you think can interact with your memory and create a more dynamic and complex mental state. Now, this can be both negative and positive. It just depends on the neurotransmitters that your thoughts generate. There is a feel-good transmitter called dopamine, which associates with pleasure and reward. But there's also a fight or flight transmitter called cortisol, which helps in short-term emergency. But if you dwell on a stressful thing or regularly think about negative things, your brain produces too much cortisol and it affects your body and your mind in a negative way. This is how thought affects the mind. Thought lets us know that we have to be careful about what we think about. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. When the Bible speaks about the heart, it means the mind, not the, the organ. So then the word of God is telling us what we think about creates who we are and who we become. 
Can I tell you this morning that you cannot be positive thinking negative. You cannot be victorious in your life thinking defeat. You cannot be who God created you to be, always thinking about what the devil has done to you. The principle of God is this, what you think the most is what you become. But in this, we see the likeness of God. Because in, cre in creation, God thought light before he spoke light. Oh, God. Because what he says is just an expression of what he's thinking. So then the real issue about mental stability is what we are thinking. Now what we think now is influenced by a whole lot of things. But regardless of the influence, we got to gain control of our thoughts. Oh God. Can I tell you that if we spent more time controlling our thoughts and quit trying to control the people around us, we would be in a whole lot better shape. But we got to gain control of our thoughts. And one way to do that is quit entertaining the negative. Where every time you are told something negative, hearing negative, experience something negative, or see something ne negative, you entertain it. And you entertain it by allowing it to resonate in your mind and take residence. I understand that there is negative things in the world. Crime is negative. Disease is negative. In, injustice is negative. Abuse and mistreatment is negative. But don't let the world dictate your thoughts and your life. Glory be to God. Uh, lean over to somebody and say, don't let the world dictate your thoughts and your life. You got God on your side and you got Jesus interceding for you. And you are not in the world by yourself. Even though you feel by yourself, you're not by yourself. And he came to give you life and that life more abundantly. I, I wish I could get about three Bible believing folk to just go into a, a whole different mindset and say God is not here to ruin my head. He's here to promote his will that I may be what he says I can be. Glory be to God. Lean over to your neighbor and say neighbor just because it happened to somebody else doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Because many times we get in our head and because it happened to somebody else, we immediately go into it's going to happen to me. It's just a matter of time. The devil is alive. Oh my God, I, it don't mean it's going to happen to you. Your, your experiences are different than other people's experiences. But you got to understand that whenever God has something happen in your life, it's there to help you and not to kill you. Glory be to God. Oh my God, I, I need some help this morning. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, after all the hell I done been through, and I'm still giving God the praise. He must be in my life. I ain't got to run around the church. I ain't got to flip over a pew to let you know God in my life. Just look at me. I'm a living testimony. We got to control our thoughts. This is what we see in the text. In the text, Paul is exhorting the believers in Philippi. Now, we hear a lot about exhortation. But do we really know what it means? Because to exhort means to encourage and console through appeal. Hmm. 
Now, now, you cannot have exhortation with just mere encouragement. Because sometimes we feel like a nut. And sometimes we don't. We can't just have console. Because as soon as we think we better, Mm, glory be to God. But we got to encourage and console together through appeal. And so the Apostle Paul now is appealing to the relationship with God. Because in that relationship, they can be encouraged and they can find consolation for what they're going through. And the reason now for the appeal is, is that they were in living in a challenging environment where they were under Roman rule and where the majority of the population was poor former slaves. Their condition was not conducive to positivity because their condition was oppressive and depressive. And can you imagine the mental challenges they were dealing with? Because nobody wants to be oppressed. Nobody wants to be depressed. And the reason they were challenged mentally was because they could not physically change their condition. But I want to ask you a question. What do you do when what your condition is not conducive to positivity, but you can't change it. Oh, God. Things are out of your control. Things are beyond your reach to change. You don't have the power to turn it around. Look at your neighbor and say, I would if I could. Can I tell you that in this season, because of environmental conditions, many people are in the text, having a hard time mentally navigating through this season, having a difficult time mentally dealing with the conditions that they are living in, having a hard time being challenged mentally by what they are dealing with physically, socially, and spiritually because what affects any part of you affects all of your mind oh God touch your neighbor and say neighbor what are you thinking uh, what are you thinking about that job and that career what are you thinking about that problem in your home what do you think about it, uh, the concerns in that relationship what are you thinking about the issues with your health about that thing in your life uh, that's not positive right now oh God and no one would think if the condition was fixed, then I would think differently. That's the common way of thinking, that if the condition was fixed, then I would think differently. But have you ever thought about that if I thought differently about the condition, that would be the better fix? Go, oh, glory be to God. Oh, God, because I'm reminded now of Israel. Israel, God fixed the condition and brought them out of Egypt but they got out of Egypt cause their mind wasn't fixed and they stayed where God brought them out of but think about this how did they have the mental stability to be in slavery and make it through slavery but to get out of slavery and then lose their mind once they got out oh God look at your name and say neighbor because the mind is the better fix. God can fix your situation, but if God don't fix your mind, you'll go right back to that same situation. Oh, God, lean over to your neighbor and say, he's talking about me right about now. God delivered me from some stuff years ago, and I went back to it. Oh, God brought me out of a, a dangerous situation, but there I go doing it again. Because God says, the greater fix is your mind. Glory be to God. Can I, can I go a little deeper? In this season, we stay in our head more than we stay in our word. Uh, 
Always thinking about somebody don't like you. Always thinking about somebody don't care nothing about you. Always thinking about somebody is opposed to you. But the word said it don't matter. Oh God, it don't matter about what people think about you. It don't matter what people do to you. Because God said whatever they can do to you, I can reverse it. Oh, I need about 15 people in here to get your deliverance uh, and tell your neighbor I'm about to grab that one right there. Ah, they lied on me, but the lie don't define me. They talked about me, but the talking about me is not going to hinder my life. Oh, look at your other neighbor and say it's all about decisions. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I know you don't want to deal with decisions because decisions point the finger of responsibility back on you. Oh, okay, okay. You say, well, they made me mad. No, they didn't. You decided to be mad. Oh, they upset me. No, you decided to be upset because I guarantee you the same folk tried it on somebody else and it didn't work. Well, I I feel God in here. I wish I had somebody in here that said, I have decided to live my life the way God wants me to live it. I have decided that life is too short for me to be broke, busted, and disgusted. I've decided that I have Jesus. Glory be to God. He says now, he says, look, here's the thing that I like about it. Here's the thing I like about it, Minister Douglas. Paul is saying this. And I can't think of nobody better than Paul to say this. (laughs) Because Paul had been through so much in his life that he learned about what he's saying. Oh, my God. Quit following folk that ain't been through nothing because what they're telling you will amount to nothing. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. You've been following folk that ain't been through nothing in their life. They were born on the right side of the track. They were born with a silver spoon in their mouth. They ain't never cried. They ain't never been through no struggle. And here you are trying to listen to them. Oh, God, tell your neighbor, I can't listen to folk who ain't been through nothing. I want to hear from folk who've been to hell, but they're back now. I want to hear from folk that been through the fire and they can tell me how to get through the fire. I want to hear from folk that did felt like they were all by themselves only to find out that God had made a way out of nowhere. I wonder is there anybody in here that's been through the fire, that's been through the flood, that's been to hell, but you're back now with a greater praise. You're back now with a greater relationship Yo, somebody just holler, I'm back now. Paul now is in a Roman jail. Check this, y'all. And you would think now he's writing from a Roman jail. And you would think that his mind in a Roman jail would be filled with a lot of negativity. But he didn't let his condition dictate his life. Because in this same epistle, in this same chapter, he defies his condition and writes, I can do all things through Christ 
that strengthened in me. Oh, glory be to God. Regardless of what the devil did, I can do all things. Oh, my God. I, I wish I had somebody in here that would just lean over to your neighbor and say, the devil abused me. The devil tried to kill me. The devil lied on me. The devil tried to do everything he could. But just like a tree planted by the rivers of water, I'm still standing in the power of my God. He defied his condition. Paul tells the church at Philippi that how he thought his way through. Woo, God, I, I, God, I felt that one right there. He thought his way through. Glory be to God. Somebody say, well, no, Pastor, we got to praise our way through. Well, that's good too. But, but when you think your way through, you don't go back to where you came from. We think your way through. Uh, he thought his way through the negativity of the various negative conditions in his life. Uh, so he says, now, finally, my brethren, and he uses the word finally to suggest at the foundation of everything I said before uh, this is the real deal. Oh, God. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, really, how did you make it? Really, how did you get through that? Really, how, how are you now? You were on the bottom of the world last week, but you're on the top of the world this week. How did you do it? Oh, God. He said, this is the real deal. Because if you're going to make it through these conditions, if you're going to defy your condition, if you're not going to let your condition overcome you, there are some things you need to think on. Oh, God. And he uses now the word think in the context of meditate. Glory be to God. When you meditate, you think in repetition. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, you repeat the thing over and over in your mind. Now, it works both ways. If you repeat your abuse, hmm, happened 20 years ago, but you still... If you repeat what Willie Lee did to you before he left you, it's still. If you repeat the last place of employment that did you wrong, but meditation also works in the positive. Glory be to God. Because when you meditate, on the goodness of God. Repeating it over and over again. Oh God. I, I love this saying that we have in the church. When I think of Jesus. Some of y'all ain't going to get that. Some of y'all ain't going to get that. Because you're thinking about your problems more than you're thinking about your Savior. But when you think about Jesus. And all that he's done for you. You ain't got to have a praise team. You ain't got to have no band. You'll just go in the prayer. I mean, you'll just go in the praise just on what you think. Glory be to God. I need you to ask your neighbor, what are you meditating on lately? Have you been meditating on your problems? Have you been meditating on your fears? Have you been meditating on what you don't have? Have you been meditating on your faults and failures? What have you been meditating on lately. So the Apostle Paul gives us some things to meditate on. Uh, tell your neighbor, listen to this. He said, whatsoever things are true. And he means that which has been truly tested 
and been shown to be a fact. Oh, God. And the word of God is true. I wish I had oh, a witness in here. It's been tried. Hey, it's been tested. And it's found to be a fact of my faith. Oh, glory be to God. Uh, tell your neighbor, you got to go on the truth of your experience with God. People can argue scripture, but they can't argue your experience. That experience that when you were sick, God healed your body. Well, you thought that door was closed and God opened the door. When you thought you wasn't going to make it, but he stepped into your midnight and turned your world around. Oh, God, tell your neighbor, I got some truth. And it's the truth that matters. And I heard Paul say that we are more than conquerors because of the truth of who he is. He also said whatsoever things are honest. And he means that which is deeply respected because no matter what I face in my life it has to respect of oh my God. Oh God, lean over to your neighbor and say your fears got to respect your God. Your doubt got to respect your God. Your enemy got to respect your God. My God is deeply respected and he revered in the heavens and on the earth. Oh God, can I go a little deeper? Oh, this is why your God gave your Savior a name that's above every name and the Bible said come on Chris oh God I'm through teaching now he said at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess well what is he saying he's saying that your God is respected that means that cancer gotta respect your God that means diabetes gotta respect respect your God that mean loneliness gotta respect your God that means whatever the devil put in your head it got to respect your God but he didn't stop there he said whatsoever things are just and what he means here is that which is righteous and conforms to God's character his being and his will that regardless of the evil that you face in your condition, know that the evil has to conform with the righteousness of God. Our God. And that's why he said that no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper because the weapon may form, but it got to reform to the righteousness of God. And I heard him say that we we know that all things are going to work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Tell your neighbor, your bad got to conform. Your pain got to conform. Your hurt got to conform. But he didn't stop there. He said whatsoever things appear. And what he means is that which is undefined that which is sacred and holy ah oh, can I tell you that the promises of God over your life are pure the Bible says that the promises of God are yea and in him amen I dare you to look at your neighbor and say so let it be it's a pure promise from a pure God that has pure love for you oh God can I tell somebody here that the love of God got you here right now the love of God got food on your table the love of God put healing in your body the love of God gave you peace when everything around you was going crazy. Oh, it's a hand. Somebody here that would say, I 
body. I need a pure love. I need a love that's not conditional. I need a love that when I mess up, it'll love me anyway. I need a love that when I fall, it'll pick me up. I need a love that will love me with the evidence why people crucify me on suspicion. Oh, God. Now he said, whatsoever things are of good report. And what he means is that which is reputable. When you're faced with a bad report, think of the faithfulness of your God. I heard, I heard, I heard the prophet say, whose report are you going to believe? Oh God, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know what the doctor said, but there's another report. I know what the devil said, but there he is another report. I know what I'm going through, but there he is another report. And the report of the Lord is reputable. I tell your neighbor, neighbor, he got a good reputation with me. He brought me out of darkness time after time. He provided time after time. He delivered time after time. And he will this time. Oh, I feel like I feel like giving him glory. I touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, if he did it once. If he did it twice, if he did it three times, he's able to do it again. I was sick once, I'm sick now, but God is still my healer. I wish I had about 15 of y'all that would just hop your neighbor and say neighbor I'm going through right now but I don't have to fear because God is faithful his reputation is good with me the next time you go through pull out your faith resume and look and see what the Lord has done I heard David say oh taste and see what the Lord has done now Paul he said now if there be any moral goodness if there be any graciousness he said I you ought to give God the praise well wait a minute it ain't fixed yet wait a minute it ain't turned around yet but if you can praise him mm, God. if you can praise him in the dark he'll bless you in the light y'all missed it right there in the darkness of your despair in the darkness of your situation in the darkness of what you're going through he said if you hurt me if you praise me like that I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing oh God now Paul I gotta go to Romans because Romans 8 and 28 here he says for we know I wish I had somebody in here that know like I know he said for we no, oh God, I know I'm not in here by myself because I know that God had brought somebody out of darkness, somebody over of drugs, somebody out of trouble. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I may not know what he did for you, but I got a testimony of what what he's done for me what Paul said for we know that all things will work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose well y'all don't believe 
evening. Y'all a rough crowd this morning. But tell your neighbor there was a woman. Can we celebrate the woman? There was a woman that had an issue. And her issue was blood. She could not stop it herself. She went to doctor after doctor. But the Bible said she thought she thought she thought she thought within herself ah touch your neighbor and say neighbor i don't have to tell you what i'm thinking because god gonna show you what i thought he thought within herself she said if i if i if I with uncertainty because wait a minute let me tell you about this there had been no record of anybody touching the hem of a garment and being made whole but look what her thought did her thought said I can't get to him conventionally but I'm I'm gonna get to him anyway High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, he ain't got to bless me like he bless you. But anyway, that you bless me, I, 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 I'll be satisfied. The Bible said that you bread got on her knees. Catch your neighbor and say, how low? Will you go to get what you need from your God? The Bible said she got on her knees and then she reached God. And I heard Paul say, not hey, that I've already attained, but this one thing that I do, I put my past behind me. Help a sister, help a brother, and say forget about what the devil did and look at what God is about to do in your life. I know you hurt, but look at God. He about to heal your hurt. I know you're struggling, but look at God. The victory is on the way. The Bible says she makes her way. She thought if I could touch the hem of his garment, she got there close to it enough to reach for the prize of a high calling in Jesus. And when she touched it, when she touched it, when she touched it, can I tell you, there was no medicine in the hill. There was no drugs in the hill. There was not a prescription in the hymn she just wanted to touch something that was touching Jesus now touch your neighbor and say neighbor think it to her past think it in the being your healing touch your body your breakthrough touch somebody oh my god I wish I had about 25 of y'all that would say I'm changing my mind I'm changing my mind. I will transform by the renewing of my mind. I got divorced, but I'm changing my mind. I've been hurt, but I'm changing my mind. I've been through, but I'm changing my mind. Cause you gonna need your mind for your victory. You gonna need your mind for your healing. You gonna need your mind for the next person that God puts in your life. High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I refuse to lose my mind, but I'm gonna put my mind in the hand of God. I'm gonna put my head in the hand 
of God. I'm going to put my life in the hand of God. I find my neighbor. Say, won't it do it? Won't it do it? Won't it, won't it, won't it? Won't it bless you? Won't it heal you? Won't it deliver you? Somebody, anybody, everybody said, I know. Think on these things. The devil knows that what you think determines what you become. So if I was the devil, I would keep mess on your mind because the devil like messy folk. Y'all, y'all don't want to. If I was the devil, I would keep former injury on your mind so that you would never step into your healing. If I was the devil, I would have everybody tell you something negative. Because I don't want you to be positive. But Paul said, I've been through it all. <laughs> Finally. Woo! God, I can hear you. Finally. I couldn't tell you this. In Corinth. I couldn't tell you this. In Berea. I can tell you this in Macedonia, but while I'm sitting in a jail cell in Rome, after I've been through all of it, after I learned how to be a bound, after I learned how to be a base, and I learned that whatsoever state that I'm in, to be there with content. Why? Because whatsoever is pure, God put it in this cell. Whatsoever things are lovely, he put it in that cell. Whatsoever things are a good report, he put it in that cell. Somebody said, wow, do you know that he put it in Paul's cell? Because you will never be anywhere where God won't be there with you. Oh, God, he is the thing that I got to have on my mind. Through the storm, put him on your mind. Through the drain, put him on your mind. Because with Jesus, I got to If I had time, I would call Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the stand. And they would tell you that even in the fire, when we thought on who he is, in this season, the enemy, he ain't after your car. He ain't after your clothes. He ain't after your diamonds or your 401. He's after your mind. He says, if I can mess up your mind, I can interrupt your relationship with God. Hmm. And I can stop you. How many of you know that, that the devil can mess your minds up so bad that you won't even praise God? Oh, oh, oh. can I go to Wednesday night? Don't raise your hand. But is there anybody in here that the devil mess your mind up so bad 
you came to church and sit on your praise. And you wanted to blame the praise team. You wanted to blame the music selection. You wanted to blame people on your row. But it was because you had a messed up mind. Oh, just tell your neighbor, it's tight, but it's right. That's why you had that argument. On the way to church. That's why when you went to Starbucks, you met Miss Attitude at the window. And when you sipped that coffee, it was nothing like what you ordered. You on your way to church. That's why when you got here, you walk by somebody, you say, how you doing? And they just looked at you like they didn't hear you. He wasn't after <laughs> your praise. He was after your mind. The reason why I'm going to have to stand over here by my spiritual son because I might need some backup. But the reason why things are not done in the church is not because of hindrances. It's because we don't have a mind. Because Nehemiah told me that they built the wall in the devil's face. And he said, because the people had a mind to work. Look at your neighbor and say, get off the bench and get in the game. Coach Carpenter here is here, and he'll tell you that he probably hears more commentary from the stands than he does from the coaches. Oh, okay. Saturday morning quarterbacks. Saturday morning running backs. We should have did, y'all should have done that, coach. Y'all should have did this. That's why coach don't pay y'all no mind. We have to, with our whole being. How many of you know that everything starts in your head? Bible says this. And Carisha, I know they like, oh my God, just end it. Bible says this. Even adultery doesn't start in the bed. It starts in the head. Mr. Bailey, I guess I just got to talk to you. Let me stand over here. Because before you ever got to the bed, yes, you were thinking. That's right. That's right. God is saying, if the devil can use it, let me use it. Glory be to God. If the devil can get in your head and you do all kind of crazy stuff, allow me to get in your head and watch and see what I will do in your life. Think on these things.
listen, if you're here and you say, well, Pastor, I'm sitting here thinking right now. And the Spirit of God is auctioning your heart. And God is saying, I want you. And you're, and you're thinking about God. But let me tell you, he's already thought about you. <laughs> he was thinking about you when he went to Calvary. He was thinking about you when he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and gave up the ghost and said, it is finished. He wasn't thinking about himself. He was thinking about you. He knows you, but he still wants you. Glory be to God. He says, whosoever will, let them come. My brothers and sisters today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, you say, well, Pastor, I believe in. That's not the same thing. I'm talking about do you have a relationship with him the devils know him but they don't have a relationship with him and if you don't have a relationship with him and you say well you know what I've been thinking on some stuff and I need God in my life if I'm talking to you I want you if you're uh, live with us I want you to get out of this seat I want you to come up here these ministers are here to lead you to Christ. And you say, I just, I need God in my life. I want you to come. Or maybe you're streaming with us today and you say, well, Pastor Ross, I want him, but I couldn't make it to the service, but I, I, I want God in my life. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. Father, I come before your presence right now. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died so that I could live. And I believe, God, that he shed his blood. And that blood has the power to wash me and make me clean. So, Father, forgive me of all of my sins. Forgive me of all of my iniquity. Father, I receive Jesus into my life. Jesus, come in. Lead me and guide me in the way that you would have me to go. I receive you now. Amen and amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with me, congratulations. You are in relationship with God. Now, here's something very important, and this is where a lot of people get tripped up on. It's one thing to get in the relationship, but it's another thing to stay in the relationship. And so what you would have to do now Wherever you are watching us from, you need to get into a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, Bible-teaching church so that you may learn of him like he already knows you. Glory be to God. And the more you learn about him, the more you will learn about yourself and grow in him. This next call is for somebody in here that says, Pastor, I've been focusing all on the wrong stuff. I've been looking at all of the things in my environment. I've been looking at things in my personal life. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm dealing with depression. Depression. I'm dealing with discouragement. I'm dealing with all of these things that I know that God didn't intend for me to deal with. 
But can I tell you, my brother, my sister, there are saving grace for you because God has not turned his back on you. He just wants you to change your mind. And if you're here, and I know, you, I know sometimes it's hard to change your mind, but if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I need prayer for the strength to change my mind because I, I've, I've been in this way a long time. And I need God. I need God. I need, I, I, I need the faith to step out on in order to think differently. If you're here, I want you to come. We're here to pray for you. These ministers are here to pray for you. How many of you have ever been through something in your life and you just needed somebody to pray with you. You didn't need them to fix it. You didn't need them to change it. You just needed somebody to pray with you. We're here to pray with you this morning. If you are here, we want you to come. We're here to pray for you. Glory be to God. Won't you come? Won't you come? Hallelujah. Won't you come? If you're here, won't you come? If you're here, won't you come?
listen. The Spirit of God is here to set free and deliver. But He's not going to make you. Glory be to God. But if you want it, He's here to give it to you. Hallelujah. Listen, this last call, this, this last call. If you're here today, or maybe you're streaming online, and you say, Pastor Ross, this is the kind of word that I need in my life. This is the kind of word. And the Abundant Love Fellowship Church is the kind of place that I need to be at. If I'm talking to you and you're live with us, please come. If you're online, go ahead and put your name and your contact information in the comment box. And we will make that happen for you. Glory be to God. Standing on your feet all over the building. As you leave today, first of all, let me say thank you for coming. And as you leave today, I want you to leave knowing that while we are bombarded with all of the negative, God is still working the positive in our favor. It's not as dark as it looks. It's not as bad as it seems because our God is still working it out for our good. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you praise. And Father God, we thank you for your providence. Father God and Lord, all of the things that we see cannot compete with the things that we believe in you. And Father God, we give you glory and we give you honor for it all. Now, Father, as we leave this place, I pronounce the blessing of a thousand times more to be released upon these people and those that are streaming with us today. Lord, I pray that they be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, wherever they go, Father God. I command the blessing on their life. And Father God, we leave this place, but never leave your presence. And we leave, Father God, with declaring that now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and who was in us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy and to the only wise God be dominion, power, and glory henceforth now and forever. And the people of God said, so let it be. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, tell your neighbor before you leave, say, neighbor, think on those things. Glory be to God.